it before you, but how would you like prepare them before role playing? Because the the idea of role playing is something like different, and I mean, like most of my students don't know what it is. <laughs> so you can scaffold that in a way. Um, so these kind of actually, I have a slide for this. Haha. -ha. Um, these kind of poster dialogues, this is such a good way to get them started, like what, we have to get up in class, that's weird. You're already get breaking that paradigm. I do this on the first day of class. Um, and this particular one, I had four different posters to kind of, this was in English uh, on a first semester German class, so they had no prior knowledge of English. And I did things like language learning is dot, dot, dot. And this one, um, had a lot of resonance with students. So a concern I have about learning German is, and I ended up doing it again on the last day of the class, but what this does is get them, it gets them used to, here's a little bit unusual method, okay, so then the next time I can have them do a tableau where they act out pieces of fruit or something kind of strange and abstract, and then the next time they can do a role play where they're themselves in kind of a weird situation, and then the next one, they can play somebody else in a normal situation. Then the next one, they can play somebody else in a weird situation. So instead of throwing them like I did in this, I actually threw you all into this kind of crazy role play, you can scaffold into that over the course of a semester. And this particular one, um, when I talked about doing research on this class, I noticed this particular class, it was the semester I was collecting dissertation data, so I was creating, I had about 20 different drama-based activities that semester, and I saw that the classroom dynamic was just really wonderful and inclusive in ways that I wasn't expecting. Um, and digging into it, I actually did research with two of my students as co-researchers, and we determined the first day of class to talk about these concerns, things we're kind of scared about, and to see oh, we're all in the same boat. That was a really important moment for them to see, okay, we're all in this together, nobody's judging me, um, it's okay to make mistakes. That was a really helpful way of getting this started. But to continue on that though, it is kind of, especially in the beginning, it's a big commitment for the instructor to, first of all, create activities that fit in that context, and second of all, to make way in a curriculum to kind of push some things to figure out how to be true to the curriculum and also have the space to do these activities. So in addition to role playing, what types of other drama-based activities do you do? Um, the role playing seems obvious to me, but are they other things? Like Absolutely. Um, I will point you to, well, I don't think we have time for this game. Maybe, maybe at the end we can do this. Um, there's a game called Thumbs, which I used for the imperative, so command forms, where you get everybody together in a circle and you're playing this game with thumbs where people are standing like this, everyone has a thumb over the other person's palm, and you're trying to pull up and catch at the same time. So you're practicing, um, you're practicing this grammar point. It's kind of also like what you were saying with grammar and what Alex was saying with grammar is that you're sneaking it in. You're not telling them this is specifically to practice the, the command forms. They're playing this game and they're hearing command forms and reacting to it. So it's like total physical response, but in another level. Um, another way, uh, let me get back to, um, and these sources, so this book, Dawson and Lee, they have a whole lot of strategies, and there's um, a free website that they have, so this will be on my slides, um, that has a lot of activities, and I'll just kind of explain the main four types of activities that are also scaffolded. The first one is uh, an active discussion starter. So something like these poster dialogues, it's active, you're starting a discussion with it. It's pretty low risk. Um, then you can move on to theater games as metaphor. So this thumbs game, you can use the reflection on that to, oh look, you're multitasking. What, how does that relate to language learning? Um, there's a whole lot of fruitful conversation that can come out of that. 
Um, and a note on that is sometimes these reflections, depending on your level, you can do some of it in the target language, but some of it you end up doing in English because it gets at things that students just don't have the capacity yet to talk about. So getting first semester students to talk about, well, I'm trying to balance being fluent but also being accurate, to have them say that in the target language is a little bit beyond their capacity. Um, the third type is called um, image work. So things like the tableau, it's a frozen picture where you have students to come up and make a scene. They are standing still, maybe at an individual or maybe students together to create some sort of a, a visual image of a scene. Um, you can have them sculpt things with each other. Um, there's lots of techniques there and role play is adding to that this character development and it seems to be the one that language instructors are the most familiar with in some capacity. I don't know if I missed this when I was in the bathroom, but did you ever explain what the rules were with the German survey? Oh, well that would be um, kind of what you were saying. I totally agree with that, that you have students coming together, they're living together, and they say, you know what, I really hate that the bathroom is dirty. So here's the rule. You're, maybe you've heard of this. Um, in Germany, a lot of times you'll see a sign in Pinken sitzen, yeah. which is like to sit while you're peeing. Yeah, and that's a common thing that people might have as a rule, like, all right, we're a mixed, we're a mixed uh, gender flat. I don't want to have to clean up your dribbles, so. Uh, even when men live together, you want that rule. <laughs> <laughs> Trust, Trust me. Yeah, no. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's a rule. That's another one I could quickly go and do a Google image search and show my students there's lots of parodies on this. And so that's, again, it's some authentic materials that people are like, I never even thought that would be a thing. So you're getting at this cultural uh, um, thing there. Were we playing with really enjoyable for students? So I think in Japanese class, there's a section where we teach negative command. We usually divide the class into wife and husband or whatever. Then they need com com you know, Tell negative, please don't do this anymore, please don't do this anymore. I mean, they really get excited. Yeah. <laughs> they do something like they do telling me imaginary husband or wife or whatever. So, you know, it's something really enjoyable. They don't think we can insert the daily activity, but we can do the whole big thing, one hour thing. Yeah, and you can, you can also modify this for your course. So we had a, a short discussion of ability and how you yeah. include all students. That there are ways, in this particular role play, you could have some, um, you could have different roles. Like, if you notice that a student really, I don't know, maybe a student has a problem for real with their roommate and they just don't lock into this, you can bring that student as your co-journalist, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there are, are alternative, forms of participation. If somebody really, really shy about speaking, that person could be a scribe, for example. Devin, thank you so much for this. <laughs>